huge fan favorite. Uh, they call him the goat, the Russian hammer. He is the one and only Artem Lobov, and he's kind enough to join us on the program. I'm so happy to talk to Artem. It has been so long since I last had the opportunity to have him on any of my programs. And so without further ado, let us say hello now to the great Artem Lobov. Artem, my man, how are you? How's things there? you? It's, it's, it's <laughs> so, so lovely to, to talk to you. I bothered you a lot to come on the show, as you know, but uh, I can understand why you didn't want to come on. You wanted some space and some quiet time, but it is great to talk to you again. I think the last time I spoke to you was after the Jason Knight fight that long ago. In fact, I could tell you a story, Artem. I had you on my show. Remember you came on after the, uh, the Jason Knight fight. Your face was pretty banged up. And after that fight, I was told, you're not allowed to talk about bare knuckle fighting anymore. It's way too gruesome for us. This is at my previous job. So uh, I'm glad now there are no restrictions and that we can talk again, my friend. Yeah, it's great to see you, Ariel. And yeah, sorry that I haven't spoken to you sooner, especially after the retirement. But just the thing for me is that, you know, this was a very big decision for me. And I I, I, I feel like I'm not going to be one of those guys that, you know, comes back in and out of it. You know, it was a decision that I thought about for a long time. It was a difficult decision for me to make. You know, I absolutely love fighting. I love the sport. I love this life, you know. Uh, and when I made that decision, I was like, fuck, you know, this is it now, you know, all, uh, all your dreams and everything kind of, it felt like all my dreams, you know, have crushed sort of, you know, it's like, even when you, I know I have a lot of losses, but even when I lost, sometimes I'd be like, okay, this is just a minor setback. This is just a setback. You know, I'll get this back. I will train harder. I will get better. I will go again. I will try again and I will come back and I will achieve the goals that I set out to achieve. So now this time when I retired, I finally had to come to this point where I had to say to myself, well, that's it. You will not achieve those goals. It will not happen for you. You weren't good enough. You didn't manage to, to get where you wanted to get. This is it now for you as a fighter. Time to hang it up, Artem. Bye-bye, you know. So that's why it was an emotional time for me. And I didn't really, I wasn't really ready yet, you know, oh, to understand. talk about it. I didn't want to start crying on the show, you know. Uh -huh. The last thing I needed uh, was that. So uh, that's why I didn't uh, I didn't uh, reach out to you sooner. No explanation uh, necessary. But could I ask you, why did you make that decision? Why did you decide back in August that it was time to, uh, to say goodbye? Uh, you know, um, uh, every other time, even when I lost or whatever, you know, I always was working towards a certain goal. You know, there was a big, big goal, big target in, uh, you know, in front of me. And the last one for me was getting into the boxing uh, and uh, getting a seven figure payday. And I felt like a fight with Berinchik was going to do that for me. He was an Olympic silver medalist and defeated in boxing, you know, WBO, international champion, all this. So I felt if I beat this guy now in bare knuckle, well, this is it. This is going to be my ticket to, to that uh, boxing fight, to that seven-figure boxing fight, you know. And when this kind of didn't happen, you know, I failed. Uh, then I was like, okay, now I can continue fighting, but it's going to be, you know, for fighting just to get some money, just to get it by, you know. There was no more big goal that I would be able to achieve anymore. On top of that... You know, my age wise as well, you know, I was like 35. I was like, well, if I have to restart now again and trying to work towards something, you know, I'm going to be getting older and older. You know, it's a little bit, uh, uh, the time is a little bit pushing on me here. Uh, another reason was the brain damage. You know, of course, it's, uh, uh, you know, been uh, in the news the last uh, couple of years. You know, um, it's something that I certainly paid attention to a lot. And I realized that, you know, I'm going to need my health. You know, I'm probably not going to make uh, enough money fighting to just do me a lifetime. So I'm going to have to be doing something else. And for that, I need a good working brain. On top of that, I have a kid now who I would like to be a good father to, hopefully be a good grandfather to his children as well one day. So all these things combined, I was just like, okay, mate, you know, probably, you know, it, it's time to hang it up and, and go pursue something else while you're still young and energetic and, you know, uh, uh, no, 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 what's what, you know, so uh, that's why I had to make that decision. It was a difficult one. And don't get me wrong, I still have offers. There are still offers in my in my inbox. And actually, I've got some of the better offers. Since really? I retired. And I couldn't even believe it. Yeah, there was like, you know, there was some offers were coming up, you know, to like 
nearly half a million, you know, some of the offers that I've been uh, uh, getting here. I've got some shit offers as well, <laughs> but I've got a lot of offers. But I just said it to myself. I gave myself a promise. Artem, you will not go back in there no matter what. Fucking make it elsewhere now. It doesn't matter what happens. doesn't matter, you know, uh, how much you want to go ba- back in there. Do not go back in there. There's only two ways that I go back to fighting, as I mentioned before. The Tohuga fight, that goes without retirement. I don't care if I'm retired or not. I always want that fight, no matter what. And if somebody wants to make my dream come true and offer me seven figures, well, then it's going to change things up, you know, a lot. And a lot of the issues that I just mentioned for my retirement, you know, uh, they will not be playing as big of a part anymore because seven figures, you know, could allow you to set up your uh, financial future for the family. And that's a big thing for me, of course, and open up a lot of doors as well. So I would consider, you know, coming back for those two reasons, the Huga fight or seven figure payday. How difficult is it though to say no to some of those? I mean, still, like if it's, you know, several hundred thousand, it's, that's still a nice amount of money, right? I mean, there was a period you weren't making close to that. So how difficult is it? Very difficult. And the thing as well, all this have been like with some YouTubers, you know, like, uh, oh God, <laughs> but in like uh, in Russia, I have, a, I've had an offer from Poland as well to box a YouTuber there. Uh, you know, so, so it's kind of, I understand like, wow, I used to fight like really tough guys for a hundred euros, 500 euros. Now I'm getting offered to, you know, box exhibition bouts against guys that aren't even, you know, that good. And, you know, I have to turn it down, but I'm like, look, you know, are you a man of your word or you're not a man of your word? That's what I ask myself when I look in the mirror, you know, and there is no in between with that, you know, with fighters, you know, you have good guys, you have bad guys, and then you have guys in between with your word, you're a man of your word and it means everything and it's worth everything or you're not. And then it's worth nothing. And and, and that's, that's what I often do. You know, I look at myself in the mirror and I ask myself that question. So I was like, look, that's it. You made yourself a promise. Now be a man and, and stick to it. This is why you're one of my favorite people that I've ever met in this sport because you're a man of integrity. In fact, I see often, like even on Twitter, I see you giving advice to fighters. I see you talking about things. There's a lot of shady people in this sport, as you know. There's a lot of shady things that go on in this sport. You know, there's managers acting as promoters who are signing fighters to their promotion. and the, you, you know what I'm talking about. It's all kinds exactly. of crazy stuff exactly. going on. And I see you trying at least to steer the fighters in the best direction possible. A lot of people don't do that in your position. So I give you a lot of respect for that. Why do you feel the need to do that? Uh, well, uh, you know, because I obviously, you know, this is, this has been a sport, you know, not just a sport to me. This has been my life. You know, I live and breathe MMA, you know, I absolutely am in love with the sport. I, I think back to the time when I was in the bank, you know, and the big financial career was ahead of me, but I just couldn't concentrate. I'd be sitting behind my computer and all I could think about was fights. I just you know, it was always in me, you know, I was so passionate about it. There was nothing else that I could have done. So for me to see, you know, all these inequalities, you know, and all this uh, dirty rats in the sport, you know, like fucking people over, fucking fighters over, you know, and it's so easy because when you're young and you're gullible and you have all these dreams and you only think about the positives, it's very hard to imagine bad things that can happen to you. Unfortunately, they do happen. So, you know, I feel that it is my job sort of as somebody that's been through all this, warn fighters. And on top of that, uh, you know, I've been very recently involved in a very, very bad deal, as I mentioned to you, uh, with a with somebody who was a friend of mine before and then became my manager. And this is something that I want to share with you guys here. Um, so that's why, then there is. Yeah, so that's why I asked you the question as a gateway to this topic, because I know this is something that has been weighing on you very heavily. So can you tell us what has been going on with you and your now former manager as of late? Yeah, I will say this. This is a long story that uh, took two years um, to, to to resolve. And uh, there's going to be a full video uploaded. I, I've uploaded it on some Russian websites already. Uh, I will upload it. And so I'm going to give you a shorter version now because the full video is like nearly 40 minutes long. Oh. So I just I'm going to show here as well. It's just so people don't think I'm reading. I have a little notes here, just one page. Wow. Because it took two years, you know, I I want I don't want to mix things up and don't want to you know confuse things. So I have a little notes here, uh, for me. So the story started at the end of 2017. Um, a friend of mine, an old friend of mine, who somebody who was a friend of mine, uh, Artem Karolanov, his name is. He was a Fight Nights Global matchmaker. 
And we were sitting in Moscow one day at one of their events. It was end of 2017. And we were talking about different things. And I mentioned to him, they said, look, I don't have a manager now. And he says to me, look, I'm a matchmaker now, but says, I always wanted to be a manager. This has been a dream of mine. I'm good at it. I want to do it. And I know a guy for a while, you know, he seems to be a good guy. He doesn't seem to be, you know, he seems to be smart enough, you know, and he's passionate about it. So I tell him, I said, look, man, you want to try being my manager? I have no problem at all. I said, look, we're friends. I give you 20%. Whatever you find, you bring, I give you 20%. If, you find, if it's my own deal and I find it, then I don't pay you. But whatever deal you find, 20% of yours. So yeah, that's perfect. That's great. Immediately he, like literally within a day or two, he wants me to sign a contract. And we're sitting there, he puts a contract in front of me. And I'm like, oh, which I trust him. And he says to me, look, this contract is just, it's nothing, it's just formality. You know, he says, if we ever decide that we're not going to work together anymore, you just tell me and we go our separate ways, no issue. So I don't even read the contract. I literally sign it right in front of him. You know, I felt a bit awkward to read it. I probably should have, but, you know, this is my friend who I trust. I'm not going to start reading the contract every page in front of him. So I open the last page, I send the contract. Uh, and that's it. So we start working. Um, he can't find really any any deals for me, but you know we, we keep working. And now this is the beginning of 2018. And he comes to me again, and he says, uh, "Artem, look," he says, "the Five Nights Global situation is very difficult now with finances. Uh, you know they they don't really have as much money as they did before, which is unfortunate." I said, "Look, I understand that." So then he says to me, "I want to leave being a matchmaker. I don't want to be a matchmaker anymore. I want to have my own management company, and let's." Two of us set up a management company together. We will uh, split it 50-50. You have all the contacts. You know, you speak English. Uh, you know everybody out there. You know, I have the contacts in Russia. I'm here in Russia and I will be like the main guy. I'll be the manager, you know, and you're just going to be the face or whatever. So I said, okay, uh, sounds good. Let's do it. And we set up uh, what's called the Gagarin Sports Management. Uh, we split it 50-50. He has all the paperwork. He didn't send me any paperwork yet. We just agreed that it's 50-50. I don't ask for any paperwork. I just say, okay, that's fine, no problem. Um, so then we start working. He starts signing some fighters, like very low-level fighters, you know, some good, some better, some worse, whatever. But uh, what I mean low-level, not in terms of the skill level, but in terms of where they are at, in terms of, you know, people knowing them. But he's not able to get any deals, not for me, not for himself. While all this is going on, you know, um, and then I get an offer from Big AFC. Uh, how I get it, uh, Beck Rowling, the fighter, you know, from uh, Battle Fighter, you know, she reaches out to me and, on Twitter and says, Artem, I'm in Big AFC now. These guys are really good. They pay well and they're interested in signing you. Can I give them your phone number? So I give my phone number. They contact me. I negotiate with them and I tell them. At the time, I told them, I said, look, guys, if you want me to leave UFC, I said, look, UFC is a big deal. You know, it's a very big uh, company. You know, it's the top of the range and I you know I fought a lot to, to get there uh, and I don't want to leave but I said if you want me to leave now I said give me this number I believe at the time I asked for a quarter of a million guaranteed I said if you can guarantee me a quarter of a million per fight I, I will leave the UFC uh, they said to me at the time so look I am not exactly a quarter of a million but we can do a bit less you know let's talk so at that time I told them I said no guys if, if you can do quarter of a million then you know I'm not interested in leaving because I still want to be with the UFC I see potential there I could still you know turn it around and something could happen from so we leave it at that then me and Kyle and off talk and say look if I'm not leaving the UFC look at the offers that I'm getting there I'm clearly you know I'm clearly wanted you know people want to see me fight so let's at least renegotiate my contract with the UFC. Now, of course, Kalanov doesn't have a contact with the UFC, so I provide him with the con with the contact. Another thing is he can't speak English, mm -hmm. so I write out the message, I send the message to him, and then he sends it to UFC to Sean Shelby as if it came from him. Wow! The reason I do it is because we're now you know in partnership, we have a company together, and I need this guy who is the manager. I need him to start talking to UFC and you know get all these contacts, so in the future he can sign our fighters to those promotions. So uh, we do this, and at the time I was on 17 and 17, so when we uh, wrote that message to the UFC, they increased my pay to 25 plus 25. Uh, so then uh, my fight with uh, Michael Johnson come, comes about. I fight, um, I get 25,000, I lost obviously, so I got just 25,000. And also, not only I didn't actually get the full 25, because they taxed me, 
uh, Canada tax 15%, which I still actually haven't claimed till this day. And they also, because there's an exchange and they pay me in dollars, but my account is Euro account. So when the money lands, I lose some on, on exchange rate. But agreement is agreement with the manager now, you know, so I pay 20% into the company now. Hmm. And now the thing is what changed with this is at the start was if I find my own deals, then I don't pay him. But now that we have a company together, it doesn't matter because now I have to pay into the company because I realize that it needs to be fed. It's a business. It needs to be fed. It needs to grow. So now, no matter whether I found the deal myself or he found it, I still pay 20% into the company to, to you know, to, to feed the, the company. So even though I renegotiated my own deal, I still pay 20%. And I paid the full 20%. So I, I transferred $5,000, even though I didn't get the full 25. Mm. But, you know, agreement is an agreement. So then uh, around this time as well, Karanov starts asking me to find fights for some of the fighters that we have. But this is like lower level fighters and like for a thousand euros, you know, 2,000 euros, and I tell him, I said, look, Artem, I don't have the time to do all this because, uh, you know, I'm still fighting, and look, you know, I'm, I'm getting paid, you know, I'm finding deals for us. All this time, I'm finding different deals, like my Parimage deal founded myself, you know, any other deals I find, and I'm paying 20% to the company, to him, essentially, you know. Yeah. So I said, look, I'm the only one bringing any money. So I said, how do you also want me to look after all these fighters? I said, I don't have time for this. So then he tells me, he says, okay, if you don't have time to do all this, well, let it, let's, it's going to be only 25% yours, not 50 50, like we initially agreed, but you're only going to have 25%. I kind of a little bit think about it for a second, but then I'm like, oh, fuck, I just want to get him off my back. I said, right, fuck off, whatever. I said, let, let it be, then that's might be 25%, whatever. Um, then uh, my girlfriend was pregnant at the time, you know, and I was like, look, this, this 25, 25 that I'm on now and I'm waiting for a fight with UFC, very difficult to get a fight. I realized, look, I need to leave UFC and I need to take that big KFC contract. So, so I say, okay, I will reach out again to BKFC. I tell them, look, guys, you know, I, let's see what can you offer me. You know, let's uh, sign a contract. I'm, I'm going to go and fight for you now. So I sign a contract. I fight my first fight, Jason Knight. The internet explodes. Uh, you know, everybody's talking about the fight. I have poly fight now coming up. So I come up to David Feldman right there and then I said, look, David, I'm all beat up. Look at me. You want me to fight poly in three months? I can't even train. I can't do anything, anything, but I'm willing to do it. But I feel I deserve a little pay rise. You know, isn't it fair? Now, in fairness to David Feldman, he's like, look, Artem, that's fair. You, you know, you fight good. You're ready to fight again. Yes. So he gives me a bump. So I renegotiate my contract. Uh, when I get home, my my uh, my clothing contract with Jim King was up for renewal, was up now. So I tell Kyler, I said, look, man, this is your chance now. I said, we've been together now nearly two years. You haven't found one deal for me. You haven't made any money for me. I said, my contract for clothing is up now. I've just had a massive fight that lit up the internet. I have a massive fight coming up with Poly Malinaji now. I said, if you cannot get me a fucking clothing sponsor now, you're useless. W what is your point then? There's literally no point get having you. So I tell all this to him, but in the back of my mind, I already seen that this guy doesn't really get the work done. So I don't want to waste my own opportunity. And I start emailing everybody from fucking Reebok to Nike to Under Armour. Anybody I could find, any clothing brand I could find, I email everybody. I'm, I'm bombarding them. And sure enough, Karlanov does nothing, but I find myself a new deal with Couture Club. And it's two and a half times bigger than my previous deal with Jim King. Mm -hmm. so, so then I'm a bit like really pissed off. So I call him and I say, listen, Artem, you know, I don't mean to start no fights here, but this is from, from my point of view now. I've, uh, I'm the guy that's fighting, bring all the money. I'm the only guy getting deals that bring money into our company. I am uh, now found myself another sponsor. And I said, all you've done so far is taken my 25% of me. Do you think that's fair? And, and to be honest, I wasn't going to start fighting with him, but I was just hoping that he would be like apologetic or something. But instead, he like goes at me, starts like, ah, oh, what's this? That's because the money is coming now from from the, you know, bare knuckles. So now you have all chance. What? Hold on a second. I've been paying you. I've been doing everything. Well, what are you on about? And is there no truth to what I'm saying? So then we have a massive fight. So then I, I'm fighting as well. I'm like, and I said, if when I was 50% owner and I paid 20% of the company, Technically, 10% is mine. 
because I'm 50% owner. So half of the profits is mine. Says so now that you've taken 25% of me, when I pay 20% into the company, a smaller share is mine. So we have a big fight over this and we settled that now I'm only going to pay 10% of the company because I only own 25%. So then uh, my fight with Polly is approaching and David Feldman tells me, says, Artem, I don't have contacts in Russia. If you can find the TV deal in Russia, I will give you 30% from that deal. So I say to Karlanov and I say, look, this is your chance now. You're in Russia. Let's find the deal. And he comes back to me with a deal. Uh, and says to me, look, I found the deal with Match TV, but there's one issue. I couldn't do the deal directly. I had to go to another guy. So he says to me, so the 30% that David Feldman will pay us, let's split it three ways. You keep 10%, I keep 10%, and 10% to this guy. Man, then I just lost. <laughs> I said, I have uh, two problems with this. My first issue is, number one, you, you know that guy that you want to pay to? I said, you are that guy to me. I pay you for that work. And I says... I don't give a fuck how many guys you need. What if tomorrow you tell me you needed 10 guys? Now I have to fucking split with 10 guys. I says, you split your share with them. But my share is my share. That's number one. And number two issue I had now, I said, so I'm fighting. Without me, none of this is possible at all. None of this happens if I don't fight, if I don't risk my health. And you want me to get the same percentage as you and some fucking guy that you found? This is crazy. So I told him, I said, Artem, you know what? Now... The issue is that not only that you're not getting deals or getting bad deals, is that I don't trust you. And this is a big issue for me because a manager has to be your closest person. You share everything with them. And now I realize that you're trying to set me up, give me all these shitty deals. I don't trust you. I said, look, we spoke about going separate ways. Let's do that now. And I said to him, I said, look, and let's, fair is fair. I understand that this is sudden. We're splitting up. So I tell you what, the company Gagarin, I said, you keep all of it. I don't even want the 25%. You keep all of it. All my contacts I shared with you, whatever else, use it, no problem. I have no issue with that. The TV deal, the match TV deal, the 30% deal, I said, you keep that 30%, all of it. I don't want none of it. You keep it. That's my kind of goodbye to you. All I want to keep is my own deals that I found myself, like Paris Match deal, the Couture Club deal, the big KFC deal. That's it. That's all I'm taking and I'm leaving you. First, he was the initial reaction was, ah, oh, please give me a second chance, you know, give me another chance. And I said, look, this is not about you being a bad manager or not being able to do the work anymore. This is about me not trusting you. And if I don't trust you, I can't have you as a manager. I can't have you as somebody so close to me if I don't trust you. So I said, no. So then he goes crazy, like, no, I want the money, blah, blah, blah. So I said to him, look, that's it. I'm done here. And I just put the phone down. Sure enough, a couple of months later, I get a letter, a court letter. Uh, saying, okay, you have a court case. For me, I say, okay, that's no problem. I hire a lawyer. Um, I hire a lawyer. We go for the first court uh, court date. The first court date happens. Him and his lawyer, they have nothing. The judge is like, what the hell is this? So they ask for the court to be moved to, uh, to another date. So they move the court to another date. We go to the second date. The same situation repeats itself again. They don't really have many facts. They don't have anything. They again ask one more time the judge to move the court case again. So we move it again. And then um, suddenly COVID hits. COVID hits and every court case is canceled. Everything is canceled except mine. And I was like really you know, surprised by it. So I called my lawyer and said, what's going on there? He says, ah, they're probably you know, sick of this guy. They just want to you know, choke him out already because that's it. So I'm like, okay, lovely. Court happens, very short fucking meeting, and they rule it in his favor. Literally, he still didn't, he didn't provide any new evidence, didn't bring anything, literally zero. He was asking to move the court, brought nothing new, and suddenly I lost. I'm like, what, what's going on? And look, I don't want to say anything here on camera, but as my, you know, lawyer suggested, said, look, there's something shady going on. You know, something, you know, maybe a bribe or something, because this is not right. No, in my mind, I'm like, fuck it. You want to play that game? No problem. I don't give up. As you've seen my fights, motherfucker, I don't tap out. So uh, we, uh, we appeal, we appeal the case, the appeal gets set. I, and now I want to be even more prepared. So before the appeal, I requested this letter from David Feldman. I don't know if you can see it, yeah. but this is an official letter from David Feldman stating that I negotiated my contract myself with him, that I've done everything myself without any assistance and everything is done by me, official letter. So I bring this into the appeal, but the appeal, George, 
uh, doesn't even want to hear it. Within five minutes, literally, my hearing was five minutes. She doesn't accept this. She says this is not evidence. She says that's it, and she throws it out. So I lose the appeal as well. And I'm saying, what do you mean it's not evidence? The whole court case is over my BKC contract. I have the fucking letter from the president, official letter, stating that I've done all the negotiation myself. How is that not evidence? And what the fuck is evidence? If this is not evidence. But I lose the case. Now again, you know, the Russian hammer don't tap out. So I then appeal. I have to read this because this was the new term for me. Cassation court. Cassation court is basically a court. They don't make a decision in your actual case but they just make a decision that your case was not viewed appropriately by the court. Mm. So I, I appeal there. They review They review my uh, my case. They straight away find a million mistakes with it. And they send it back saying to the appeal court, saying, no, motherfuckers, you made a mistake there. You didn't give this guy a fair trial. You didn't do your job. So now my appeal gets set again for another day. And now already in this appeal, no no iffy, iffy shit can happen because the cassation court is so high up that, you know, they are watching them now. They, you know, they have to now do everything by the book. So, of course, uh, my, my, you know, my, uh, my appeal happens. And this is the letter I want to show you that he brought into the fucking thing. And this is a fake letter. You probably can't really see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's like an e- <laughs> it's just an email, basically. Yeah. It's a fake email from... David Feldman, as he claims, and it reads that uh, that he basically did the negotiation. It's just an email. It's not an official letter. It's just an email. Now, not only that, it is so badly done that in in this email, his name is written with Russian letters, with the Cyrillic letters. When the judge saw that, she she started laughing. She said, "So you're telling me that the American president, you know, David Feldman, writes in Russian? What the fuck is this?" They kind of like. You know, they realize they fucked up and his lawyer just says, well, you know, he's uh, he's of Jewish descent, of American Jewish descent. You know, there's a lot of Russian Jews, you know, maybe something, you know, she tried to. But the judge literally just started laughing. First out laughing. She kicked them out of court and the Russian hammer won. And I won my, my court case. That's how you won? Yes. Holy. Now, Ariel, there's another twist in the story. Wait, when was that, another by the way? That when I- was that? When was that? Before you tell me the twist, when did that happen? When did you win? I won in uh, just in uh, July, uh, August. Wow. Just August. Okay, okay. And what's the twist? Just, and the twist is another twist. So while all this was going on, if you remember, I signed with a French promotion, MMA promotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, to fight in Paris, right? And it's happened to be the matchmaker of that promotion. His name is Guillaume. He's a French guy. Uh, he has a, a fighter. Uh, he is also not only a matchmaker there, he is actually a manager. You know, he manages a lot of fighters as well. And one of his managed fighters is Tony Johnson. Hmm. So when I was meant to fight there, um, and because Tony Johnson used to fight in Fight Night Global, Guillaume also knows Carlin. They also know each other. So when I got signed to fight there, Carlinov messaged Guillaume asking how much am I going to get paid for my fight and saying that I owe him $70,000. He was trying to get his money back through my, you know, uh, wow. my purse. He wow. was trying to, you know, get them to send my purse to him wow. rather than to me. But Guillaume immediately messaged me all this, sent me a screenshot and showed it to me and said, Artem, you don't even have to explain anything to me. And he says to me, that guy is a dirty motherfucker. And he tells me this story. He says, when Tony Johnson used to be in uh, Sign and Fight Night Global and Karlanov was the matchmaker, we would be asking them, say, well, what, you know, what's the story, fights, whatever. And Karlanov told them basically, listen, if you want to fight there, you have to give me 10% of your purse. So he was basically stealing money from Tony Johnson. You know what I mean? Saying to him, look, if you don't give me 10%, then there's no fight. Just doing the Georgia thing. And obviously, Tony and the manager, Guillaume, they didn't want to do this. But as you know, opportunities are very few in this world of MMA, and they had no choice but to accept that raw deal. Uh, and you don't have to listen to it just for me. I sent you a, a video of Tony Johnson confirming those uh, those words himself. So that's what that guy was doing. So John tells me, look, he's a very dirty guy. A guy like this in his position, stealing, robbing from fighters who already fucking struggle to make ends meet. You know, he's, that's not a good person. So he says, I, I, I know what you're telling me is the truth. And he says, don't worry about it. Your purse is safe. You're going to get every cent of that. And that motherfucker is not getting nothing. First of all, congratulations. Well freaking done, Artem. 
You don't tap in Thank the cage. You. you don't tap in the courtroom as well. So exactly. uh, good man, good man. Um, and I can't imagine how that whole ordeal felt. Did you retire because of this? Did the stress, did it make you hate the sport? Did it, did, did it turn you off? I mean, you said August. That was around when you retired. So I was wondering if the two stories were combined. Uh, not at all, not at all. It just okay. happened that it kind of okay. at the same time, but I retired for all the reasons I mentioned. Gotcha. But I'm not going to lie. This whole situation have given me a lot of stress. And another thing is this, the court was supposed to be the second uh, appeal. I was supposed to win in July before my fight, which I was really looking forward to. I was thinking, okay, I win the court and then go and fight. But this motherfucker submitted this fake fucking email and asked to move the court date again to August. Uh. So... Then I had to go into a fight fucking with this thing in the back of my mind. No excuse at all. Look, I was beat fair and square, not at all, but just, you know, something yeah. that obviously was weighing heavy on my mind throughout these two years, you know? Of course. Um, after all of this, have you ever heard from Artem again? Uh, no, I've never heard from him again. I don't even want to hear from him again. You know what I mean? I know everything I need to hear from this motherfucker. Yeah, I was just wondering just, if he tried if he tried to reach out to you and, well, I don't know. I was just curious. No, another actually moment that I want to mention here when he when he got the, the the decision, you know, the initial decision when he won that, he tried to actually email me at that time saying, "Give me the money now, or else I'm going to you know go to the to all the uh, news uh, publications." And he did that, and I was so honestly like pleasantly surprised that none of the Western media printed it, and they actually messaged me and they said, "Artem, we know you all too well." There is no way in hell that you could have done something like that. We know that that this guy is lying. And not one printed it. Although it would have been big news, you know, like me story with the manager, right, right, but right. not one printed it. So, you know, I want to thank everybody that, you know, reached out and, uh, you know, uh, gave me the benefit, you know, benefit of the doubt. I, I really appreciate that. Well done. Well done. Um, and so I guess there are some lessons here, right, for not only you, but all fighters, right? You know, that initial contract that you signed, you say, you know, I wish I would have read it. It's awkward when someone who you think is a friend is going to put a contract in front of you. But um, I guess, you know, fighters are put in a lot of tough positions where they want to believe that this person is going to lead them to bigger purses and paydays and all this stuff. But uh, there's a lot of people out there that want to take advantage of the fighters, right? So there's, there's a greater Absolute, lesson here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and another thing, actually, Earl, I want to mention sure. here is about Camille Gajiv, the Fight Nights Global uh, president. Yeah. Because he was asked by the Russian journalists about this whole story, and he was shown a video of Tony Johnson uh, and everything. And his comment was saying, there is no way that Karlov did this to Tony Johnson. And he said that Tony Johnson is just looking for a spotlight. So my question to him now is, number one, don't forget that uh, Tony Johnson right now is a heavyweight champion of ACA. ACA is a very well respected organization in the world. You know, they do 50,000 bonuses and everything. And, you know, let's be honest now, I don't want to, you know, be like getting a dig in, but Five Nights unfortunately had some, you know, bad luck, you know, financially. And ACA is now, you know, they're definitely above them. They're, you know, a world known organization. And Tony Johnson is a world champion, heavyweight champion. And he had to knock out some very, very, very top competitions to get there. And uh, Gajiv saying that, Tony wants some spotlight. Come on now, spotlight what? In the story with Karlanov, who is an unknown guy. Nobody ever heard of this guy, not in Russia and not in, in the rest of the world. So he thinks that he wants a spotlight by mentioning this Karlanov. Come on now, the guy gets his spotlight by knocking guys out in ACA, some tough competition. You know what I mean? That's how he gets his. Tony is a solid guy. You know, he's never, you never hear him in no news, no nothing. He's just a quiet guy that trains hard and knocks guys out. So I was very, very uh, upset when I seen Gajit claim that, you know, uh, this didn't happen and Tony is just trying to get a spotlight. What is he all about? Good man. Um, could I ask you uh, at this point, like what what does Artem Lobov do? Like what is what is your career now? Now that you say you're not going to go back to fighting, how are you supporting yourself, your family? What's the next chapter? Uh, yeah, well, I've, I've been doing a lot of work with that very much. They have been very, very good to me, you know, uh, throughout the years. They have been uh, not just uh, a sponsor for me. They've become like a partner, friend, family. You know, uh, they, they get me involved in a lot of uh, 
projects that allow me to earn elsewhere. I'm also involved a lot with Mach HFC, where my last fight took place, you know, where planning an expansion. Uh, I'm also involved in some other projects that I just don't want to mention just yet. You know, I remember I told you that I don't like to talk about my business. When sure. it, if it's successful, it will speak for itself. So I'm hoping that it works out as well. I'm just in some negotiations at the moment. Uh, so yes, I'm doing well. You know, I'm not doing uh, too bad. I was uh, lucky enough to be in a position uh, where I could retire, you know, where I didn't have to uh, fight and, uh, and, you know, put myself at unnecessary risk and just show up there for a paycheck. You know, I, I was fortunate enough to have the people in my life that allowed me to, to retire now and still healthy and able. So you're in a good spot. You're 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 content with everything. How it all played out? Yes, I'm very content. My kid is growing. I love him to bits. Uh, so things are good. Things are good. Could I ask what do you want your legacy to be in MMA? Uh, I want my legacy to be about the sport. I mean, what is why is this sport so popular? Why is fighting so popular? What does it represent? It's because people love to watch it because it shows courage. It shows uh, determination. You know, it shows uh, uh, heart, you know. And, and I feel that I've shown exactly that. Courage never turned down a fight in my life. Never pulled out of a fight in my life. Who can say that? Not many. Isn't, isn't that courage? It is courage. Going into the fight with fucking temperature fever, 40 degrees, you know, Celsius, when you can't and barely get up and you realize you're just going to get an ass whooping here because you can't even lift your arms. But no, there's no way I cannot show up to a battle that I agreed to, that I said I'm going to show up to. No way. I'd rather take a loss but not show up. That's courage. Uh, heart. Never, never tapping out in a fight. Being choked out twice, having my arm broken once. I've never tapped out no matter what. Lost many, but never tapped out. Not one man can say that he made me quit. He made me tap out. You know, those things I want, I want them to be, you know, I want my legacy to be about that because I feel that's what the sport is about. And and I feel that sport needs more of that. And to be honest with you, I see a lot more of that coming now. There's a lot less record part, parting starting to happen. You know, it's sport is going in the right direction. I'm very happy where the sport is going. And the fans still love you. Like even today, when I say you're going to be on, it's all goat, goat, goat. They they still uh, they still hold you in high regard, and I'm sure that feels good as well, right? Yes, I want to say a big thank you to the fans, and they've given me my favorite one of all the ones that they say. You know the way John Kavanaugh has says, "Win, uh, win or learn." Well, the goat one, as uh, as said by the fans, I win even when I lose. That's even right. when I lose, I still win. <laughs> That's right, motherfuckers. Thank you for that. Really appreciate it. Choo-choo, motherfuckers. The gold never quits. I love it, Artem. Artem, so great to talk to you. I'm happy it all played out. Uh, do you feel do you feel like you got everything off your chest? Is there anything else you want to say? Yes. Thank you so much, Ariel. I got everything off my chest. I thought this was important. And I'll be honest with you. I actually didn't even want to do it because once the story was over, I was like, oh, fuck, I just want to forget it and put it behind me. You know, but I was like, no, I can't let this motherfucker get away with this. Because that's what happens every time. And and in fairness, when I reached out to Tony, he wasn't the same way. He said, look, it's in the past now. I've forgotten about it. And I said, Tony, come on, man. We can't let this motherfucker get away from this. This was a very dirty thing that he done. He stole money from you. Stole money from your table. He stole food from your family. In a dirty, dirty way. We have to get this guy. And that's why Tony recorded that uh, video. So I want to thank him once again for you know having my back as well on this. And I want to thank you as well, Ariel, for having my back on this also. Always. And thank you all to all the fans that have my back also. And the haters, as always, thank you too, motherfuckers. <laughs> Never forget the goat. Choo-choo. <laughs> I love you, Artem. You're the man. Thank you so much. Good luck to you in this new chapter. My best to your family. And uh, come on anytime. You're always welcome here, my friend. Thank you so much, Ariel. Really all appreciate right. this. There he is, Bye -bye. the Russian hammer, the goat, Artem Lobov, joining us. Wow. I feel like you can clip off that uh, choo-choo at the end there. What a legend. What a freaking legend.